years you put have, have put some minutes in on the NBA court. Like, I mean, I have to imagine that that was, I mean, I know you, you, you have your goals and you're super driven, but that had to be a moment for you. More so for my family, you know, I think just to, to put in all the work, see all the work that they put in. That's just, that's one of the minor goals for me, you know, playing a minute 45 in an NBA game was, was definitely not the, uh, the end goal. It's just, like I said, it's definitely the right direction for sure. What's going on guys, it's Greg Misko Styes, and today we have a conversation with Pat Spencer. We talk about his transition from lacrosse to basketball, what it's been like to play in the G League and the NBA, and what is up next for him, so enjoy. There we go. Greg, what's happening, man? Give me one sec, I'm gonna try to transfer this over to my uh, my laptop here. Hey, no problem. Gotcha, you got me? Hey, I got you. Hey. How you doing, Pat? How are you? I'm good. Thanks for taking the time today. I really appreciate it. I know you probably are busier than you've ever been. So traveling, definitely staying busy, but it's all good stuff, you know. So enjoying it. Where are you right now? Uh we're in Mexico City. We got a G League trip here, finishing up the back half of our road trip. So we got a game tonight. And then we head to uh Austin, Texas tomorrow. Yeah, you really are traveling around. Yeah, we we I think this was like a, one of our longer ones. It's a 10 day road trip. So Knocking it out. Good. Well, I appreciate you taking some time here to talk to me. I uh, I know I talked to you a long time ago about doing something like this. And then the game that I was going to come to um, for the Capital City Go-Go got canceled. Yeah. And uh, we never got it back on the schedule. So um, let's just throw down a couple of questions for you. And you can just freelance talk about whatever you want. But I wanted to start. I don't think everyone really heard that much of like your starting story in lacrosse. Like what age did you get into it? How did you find yeah. the sport? Uh, I think I started in like second grade, first or second grade. I can't remember the exact year, um, but it was one of those things. I was fortunate enough to have my dad coach basketball um, and most of my sports growing up and just had a group of friends that I played everything with in, in the Maryland area. You know, we moved around quite a bit when I was younger, but was fortunate enough to spend um, a large portion of my childhood in Maryland. Uh, and, and obviously, as you know, being from there, lacrosse is kind of the sport you pick up in the spring. So I, I played lacrosse, I played baseball. Just kind of have my hand in everything, and um, fortunate enough, I think, that I got to pick it up at such a young age. And when you were little, did you, like, play basketball and lacrosse equally? At one point in your life, did one start to take precedent over the other? Uh, you know what? I don't think it took precedent. I, whatever season I was in, I played and, and focused on that. I, I don't think it took precedent until um, really probably, like, the later middle school years trending into high school. You know, unfortunately, back in that time, recruiting was, like, eighth ninth grade so you kind of had to, to hunker down and, and pick a sport aau basketball and, and some lacrosse tend to be at the same time um so I, I really had to pick one and you know i think some people know my story being a little bit undersized at five four lacrosse seemed like the more viable route to to play at the higher level so um ended up playing some lacrosse and, and had to forego the aau journey and you're a big guy now i mean what are you six two six three yeah, about six three. Yeah. When did you hit that growth spurt? I mean, you go from being a, a, a one of the smallest in your class at that point, maybe basketball not looking so good. You obviously hit a spurt at some point. Yeah, I think it was sophomore to junior summer. Um, I was probably floating around five six and probably got close to six foot about that time. Um, six one, maybe junior year. Uh, so that summer was a really big summer for me. Okay, and then famously, this was written up a little bit that you got cut from the varsity team to the JV at BL. Um, you know, do, what was going through your head at that point? Do you have any advice for kids, you know, who might get cut from a team this spring? Like, where was your head at, at that point? Yeah, I think I'm so fortunate to have had such a great and still have such a great support system. Um, you know, I think the, the coaches at BL really have my best interest in mind. And I think that's something that for some kids, it, it's tough to to hear that message when you get cut, because that's the toughest thing. Um, but I, I knew that they have my, my best interest in mind. I wasn't going to have the opportunity to play you know, extensive minutes on, on the varsity team. Um, that was just a loaded team. And so they felt like the limited minutes I would get on varsity wouldn't be as productive, you know, for, for my growth as it would have been um, playing JV. So had the ball in my stick quite a bit as, as a sophomore on JV and had the chance to develop. Um, and so as you got later in your high school career, you were obviously being recruited for lacrosse. Were you being recruited for um, college basketball as well? Uh, so we had workouts in the fall and that's when some of the recruitment was going on. Um, I had a teammate of mine who ended up playing at Stanford, shout out to, to Cody Pugh. 
he had a bunch of coaches coming in to look at him. And so um, coincidentally, some of those coaches would ask about myself and, and what my situation was. But at that time I was, you know, signed, sealed and delivered for Loyola and I was happy about where I was heading. So basketball was, was definitely in the back of my mind. Um, but, you know, I made the commitment to Loyola and, and, and wanted to see that through. And then, you know, I think people are pretty aware of your time at Loyola. Um, you really personal scene tour time winner, uh, one of the best to ever do it. Um, as you got toward the end of your career there, when was the decision made? Like, maybe I do want to do a fifth year and play basketball. What was that? You know, it's difficult to be a lacrosse recruit with only one year of eligibility left and go find a program that can fit into. What was that process like? Yeah, I mean, I'll be honest, it started freshman year. OK, um, so it was it was early on. You knew you that, that well, was I, knew, I knew. Yeah, I knew I was going to play freshman year. Um, I don't know if I've ever put it out there, but I, I, I don't think it. you have. I read I read almost everything I could find. I, I think it, it came as a surprise to the lacrosse world when you were the number one PLO draft pick in the first ever draft. And then, you know, pass is going to go play basketball. So that was the plan the whole time. Every draft has a player where it all begins. In the NFL draft this year, it was Kyler Murray. NBA draft is going to be Zion Williamson. Who is that player in the PLL? Yeah, unequivocally, that's Pat Spencer out of Loyola. Really a generational talent. Something you have to understand about Pat Spencer right now. Yeah, unique position where he has a fifth-year eligibility to play college basketball. May he explore that, may he not. That's certainly going to be a, a factor with this first pick overall. It's kind of a damned if you do, damned if you don't kind of selection. Yeah, all along. Um, you know, I had even reached out to some coaches after my freshman year of lacrosse. I just missed it so much. And uh, so I just wanted to see what would be out there. And I just felt like I owed it to Coach Jimmy and Loyola to, to finish what we started there. Um, you know, we had just come off that Final Four year as a freshman, and, and I felt like I had a pretty good year. And so it would have been a little bit unique to step away from the game at that point. So – ultimately just put it on the back burner and, and knew that down the line would be something I would be pursuing. But uh, like I said, I think what's out there is also true. And you know, I didn't really pursue it until after senior year because I wanted to make sure I was, I was dialed into what we were doing at Loyola. I didn't want to be a distraction. So um I had like a tight window after our, our season to really get after it. I had some coaches um, laying some groundwork on the, on the back end for me, uh, making some calls and, and building some connection for me to, figure out where there might be a possible opportunity. But I really had from about June 1 to June 15-ish to find a couple of those schools that would really oh, be a good fit. Tight window. I mean, we had, you know, lacrosse, we unfortunately didn't get to the Final Four, but we were playing, you know, into May. Right. And then we had a uh, we had a team trip for Loyola, which, you know, I was definitely going to go on because it was kind of my last hurrah with, with all those guys. So Where'd you guys uh, go? Uh, we went to Portugal. Great time. So – uh, we did that, you know, the NCAA lets you go once every four years. And so that was just happened to fall after my senior year for Loyola and uh, just felt like I wanted to finish it out with those guys. So I really did have a tight window. I connected with with Coach Collins when I was actually over in Portugal um, from Northwestern. And, you know, I had a couple of former coaches really help me out in terms of getting those connections. And when I touched back home in the U.S., my dad and I popped down to, to Northwestern to do a visit. And I mean, everything lined up, you know, you get a one year degree from Northwestern, you get an opportunity to play in the big 10 and, and develop your game and figure out what you need to do to get to the next level. And so I owe those guys a ton. What coach Collins had built there has it, been incredible. So excited to see them run into March and, and maybe April as well. Yeah. And um, you know, when you got drafted, was that PLL pick opportunity? Was that enticing at all? Or you were locked in? No, I was locked in. And I, to be honest with you, I tried to be, as straightforward as I could with those guys, you know, I, I right. told them exactly what my goals were and, and, uh, and where I was heading. And, uh, sounds like you're ready to make the pick. So go right sure. ahead. All right. With the, uh, with the first pick, the archers lacrosse club, take Pat Spencer from Loyola. How much of a consideration was the situation that Ryan just laid out in terms of the unknown of this first season? Well, he, you know, he's a young man that's, that's got some options and, and we respect that. Um, but he is uh, as advertised, he makes everybody else around him better. You know, they felt like the risk reward was there to maybe take the opportunity. I think they felt like even if there was a sliver of a chance they could get Pat Spencer, even if it was a couple of years down the road, they wanted it. Yeah, so I, I appreciate that, you know, but I, I try to be as straightforward as I could. That way I didn't feel like I was leaving anybody um, mm -hmm. anybody else to dry, you know. So um, I know the Archers have done all right without me. So um, yeah, I'm excited to see what Paul's building over there.
And so uh, that year at college, like what was the experience playing college basketball like relative to lacrosse? Uh, was it similar? Was the the intensity level bumped up being in a Big Ten basketball program? Just overall, how did you like that year? I guess it got cut short. Yeah, with, I mean, I've never lost in my life, dude. So that was like the hardest year of my life, to be honest with you, um, in terms of sports and competition. It just uh, it was a growing year for me. I knew that going in. I had so many things that I needed to work on. And like I said, I owe Coach Collins and that whole entire community a lot for allowing me to to take that year and grow. Um, ultimately, I just wanted to go in there and compete and, and bring an edge to the program and hopefully leave a mark in that respect. I knew that I had a lot of work individually to work on to get to this level. Um, but the atmosphere is incredible. I mean, to play in some of those Big Ten arenas and, and play in some of those big-time games, uh, I owe them a lot for for helping me get to this level. I, I remember I went to the game you guys played at Maryland, um, and I filmed it and put out a pregame clip where you were just warming up and you, like, tossed the ball out and windmill dunked it, put it on Instagram, and it blew up because everyone knew you could play. There was that through X segment that had you – playing a little bit of basketball, but I think you're right being in that big 10 stadium that was packed and seeing you like get your, you know, forehead up to the rim. I think people were like, damn, like Pat Spencer, <laughs> you know, no wonder he, he wanted to go do this. The adrenaline kicks in for sure too, when you get to come home and play in front of your family and all your friends. So, um, but yeah, I mean, I, like I said, that, that platform gave me an opportunity to really sh- figure out what I needed to work on um, to get to this next level. And I had a ton of work to do over the last few years, but, and still do, but uh the Big Ten and, and Coach Collins were, you know, a big, big help in, in getting me to where I'm at today. Yeah. So COVID uh, shuts the season down early. Unfortunately, um, you end up in Germany to play at the point where COVID kind of screwed up all sports leagues. Um, was that a point where you maybe rethought your decision or like I'm, I'm going, you know, the dream is basketball. It's what, a, you know, you were out of basketball for a long time. You got a little taste of it back in college. You're like, oh, that's where I want to be. And that's when you pursued the Germany opportunity. There's never a plan B with me. Um, I just, I just don't doubt myself. And so I'm going to put in the work to get there. So Germany was a little bit of a detour. Um, everything was bubbled that year for COVID. Right. So I had an opportunity over here with the G league team that fell through, uh, cause we didn't get anything in writing and, uh, you know, live and learn. But I, I had one year of college ball and I couldn't afford to have basically a blank year on the resume. And when right. my deal an opportunity fell through over here. I just felt like I needed to pop over there, keep a ball in my hands and, and get something on the resume to help me work my way up the ladder. So Germany was a unique experience. I know there's a lot of people that that love the overseas experience. Um, at that time, like you said, it was peak COVID. Everything was shut down. It was a nine o'clock curfew in the city. So it was definitely a little bit more unique than the, the usual overseas. Yeah, you didn't get to live it up or go see oh, it. Yeah, I didn't get here. So I try not to talk down on it when people ask me about it, but I truly didn't have the experience that I think some of those guys have when they go over there. So, I mean, um, you know, you're in it for the passion, but people are always interested. Like, is there any money in, in basketball over in Germany or was it more like resume builder had to keep on people's radar? Yeah. I mean, I, I keep a lot of that stuff to myself, but yeah, the, the overseas leagues, um, they, they pay well, give or take where you're at, you know, mm-hmm. uh, it's, it, yeah, tough to tell. Some leagues are really good. Some leagues are, are bad. Some pay on time. Some don't. Um, some are in the Euro League, some are in the Euro Cup. There's different different layers to it. Um, but the league I was in was, was one of the better ones for the Germany uh league. And so, you know, I'm thankful to those guys for giving me an opportunity to come over there for two months as well and compete. Okay. So you play over there and then you do, I mean, it was obviously the right decision because you got the opportunity to come back and play the G League, which I'm sure is what you wanted in the end. Yeah, the goal was to always get the NBA opportunity and just had to find a way to work my way up the ladder. Um bunch of different hurdles through that whole roller coaster but um ended up finally getting an opportunity to get in get my foot in the door with with the go-go through tommy shepherd and, and amber nichols who were great to me um uh, tommy was the former gm of the wizards and amber's you know the current gm over there and so they helped me get my foot in the door with capital city um bumpy year for me you know learned a lot found out that you know the two-way guys are going to play their 30 35 minutes a game um no matter what mm-hmm. and Fortunately, we had two point guards that way. So Capital City was a grind of a year for me, just putting my head down and working and, and competing, uh, which led to a Sun League opportunity with the Wizards. And then, um, you know, got shorted some minutes in the first handful of games, but finally got an opportunity to compete in the last couple games where we actually played the, the Pacers and the Warriors. And then um, that's when I got the call to come out and compete. So when you, when you made it in the G League, did you feel like, 
this is it. I've made it. I'm in the top 1% of 1% of basketball players in the country. Like I, you know, how did that make you feel? Was that the milestone you were looking for? Or is it, you know, you, you want to do one more? Yeah. I think everything's just another step in the journey for me, right? Like the two way is, is not a, a long-term contract. Um, and it's not, you know, a standard contract. So for me, the, the two way as great as it is, um, it's just another step in the right direction. It gives me a little bit more uh, opportunity to go in there and compete, you know, for the end of this year, but really heading into the summer and into next year. So everything's just another step in the right direction for me. I think, like I said, I'm, I'm pretty competitive and, and driven in my own way in terms of meeting goals. And so, I, you know, the two ways, it's another step in that right direction. So explain for lacrosse fans a little bit, because I had no idea um, the, what the two way is, you know, yeah. simplify. Yeah, the two way is um, there's a handful of different contracts. The two way is, uh, an NBA contract that allows you to go between the NBA team, like the Warriors, and then the G League team. So you get up to, I believe, 50 games with the ball club up top, and then um, you have the ability to pop back down and play with the G League team and have an impact down there too. So um, the goal for me is, is to finish out strong here. I think most of this year will be spent in the G League, um, finishing what we started here, and, and I'm fired up about that. We've got a great group. Um, and then I'll have the opportunity to go up and be a part of that team uh, as we make a run here down the stretch and then come playoff time. But, uh, you know, the real goal for me this summer to get back, I had hip surgery back in March, and, and the goal for me this summer uh, is to get back to, you know, peak athleticism and, and feel like I have an opportunity to come in there next year and compete for uh, a roster spot and, and try to get into the rotation. But I mean, you have suited up for the Golden State Warriors. You put have, have put some minutes in on the NBA court. like. I mean, I have to imagine that that was, I mean, I know you, you, you have your goals and you're super driven, but that had to be a moment for you. I think, yeah, it was a cool milestone, you know, um, more so for my family, you know, I think just to, to put in all the work, see all the work that they put in, um, that they poured into me over the year, just to be able to see it come to fruition and, and, uh, and check in was definitely a milestone, but that's just, that's one of the minor goals for me, you know, playing a minute 45 in an NBA game was, was definitely not the, uh, the end goal it's just like i said it's definitely in the right direction for sure i think it definitely it feels like it vindicated your your decision path i think a lot of people when you went to do college basketball lacrosse you know we're, we're selfish we wanted you back said oh he'll just go do that and he'll he'll come do his year in, in 2021 and then you went and you made the g league we're like oh that's cool but i think this people really sat down and said wow he's you know, really something special like you know he, he should be he should follow his passions and maybe we shouldn't be so selfish wanting him back in lacrosse uh, so yeah, cool I think, I mean, the lacrosse community has been so great and supporting, you know, just from my internal circle, from, from coach Timmy to, to Paul, to everybody involved, um, in the lacrosse community. So, you know, all my, all my drives are internal, um, everything that I'm doing, it, it's not to impress somebody else or, or meet a standard of, of somebody else. It, it's what I've set in mind for myself to, to go out and, and compete and, and achieve. And so, um, anytime you have the support of, of the people around you, it's great. But ultimately, at the end of the day, it's uh, it's the internal drive that gets me going. So, do you ever like just pick up a stick casually? You got one around? Or do you still have any? You just pull uh, it all from time to time, or is it is it down totally? It to be honest with you, man, I've been so focused on this. This off season has been a whirlwind for me. Um, lost a couple of grandparents, and they were my best friends, and so that was a, a long off season combined with hip surgery and wrist surgery. So. Um, didn't really have the opportunity between a, a broken wrist and a banged up hip to really pick up the stick. Um, and to be honest, the other sticks that I pick up when I do get a little bit of free time are, are the golf clubs. So <laughs> I I Makes do sense. you want to relax, relax, you know? Yeah, get yeah, something you know, relaxing. I wouldn't even say it's relaxing to be honest with you. Unfortunately, we we get after it on the course. But how's your golf game? Do you play with the other other guys on the team? Uh, you know what? I haven't had the chance to because of the hip, but. Um, I played a couple times with Jerome Robinson, who was on our G League squad last year. He's up with the Warriors on the two-way too, um, and then we'll get out this summer. You know, find a way to get out with with Steph and some of the guys that like to play. So um, we've got it. I think we've got a core group of guys within the locker room that enjoy it. So uh, that'll be fun. We'll see, we'll see how the games hold up this summer. But ultimately, you know, really, my dad, and my brother, and I to get after it. Yeah, that's great. Well. Um, you know, I, I think everyone out there, lacrosse players, basketball players, anyone watching would love, you know, if you had any advice for them as they're coming up in their careers, you know, you're obviously so driven, have, have so much uh, self-discipline. I'm sure you've got a little tidbit to give the, the kids out there. Yeah, I think for me, it's just 
um, the hard work doesn't stop. You know, I think obviously there's going to be hurdles along the way. Um, point the finger at yourself first and, and be able to kind of read the room and, and assess the situation before you start blaming others. You know, I feel like I've been cut so many times and, and, uh, you know, it's a roller coaster of a journey, but ultimately, um, I think that's what makes it fun too, right? It's, it's being able to better yourself and compete day in and day out and just become the best version of yourself, whatever that is. So, you know, I, I think it's tough to give life advice because everyone's situation is different, but, uh, ultimately I think, you know, my motto is, is pretty simple. You know, if you're a good person, you work hard, you surround yourself with good people, you do things the right way, tend to be rewarded. So, um, yeah, that, that's kind of all I got. That's perfect. I think it really resonates. So, uh, yeah, I want to thank you for taking some time with us to discuss. I think the lacrosse fans will be happy to hear from you and we'll be rooting for you as you go across the rest of this journey. I appreciate it, man. Tell Mike I said hi, too. It's been too long. <laughs> I will. He was saying he didn't think you would remember him. Oh, uh, I, don't remember him. <laughs> I don't know. I feel like that was a long time ago. I don't know. Man. That's, like I said, it's all a part of the journey. So that was uh, a big part of my growth, too. He's going to love to hear that. He's yeah. going to come to his head. He's going to be really excited. <laughs> All right. Awesome. Thanks, Dad. I appreciate it. I love what you guys are building there, too. So it's cool to see. I used to use the uh, the mesh back in the day. I remember that. I remember that. Yeah, I was just um, looking at a picture of your stick the other day just as I was going through research. Um, and it's, yeah, it's funny, the two nylons and um, the old yeah, school I had farmer heads. I had a funky setup for sure. Yeah, you did. Um, all right, Pat. Good luck, man. You ever need anything? I can ever help you with anything. Um, should be a message. I'd be happy to. Likewise, man. Appreciate you. Have a good one. Good luck.